Now, the third point about my experience with the English language, which is about sentences. Knowing a lot of words and their correct pronunciation is not enough. You must know how to put them into sentences. In so doing, you are to understand their functions, whether they are subject, object, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and whatnot. Additionally, you should know different kinds of sentences, whether they are simple, compound, complex, and mixed. To use an active sentence like, he told me, you were looking for me all the time is quite boring. You should sometimes passivize it into I was told by him that you were looking for me. When somebody broke the glass and you know his name is David, you should not say David broke the glass. Instead, you should for your own safety say the glass was broken by someone. The order of words in the sentence is no less important. When you and your wife did something good, you must say, my wife and I, not I and my wife. This is to show you are a good husband and a responsible person. It is all the more important to know that one sentence can be said in many ways with the meaning unchanged. For example, the sentence, I think you are an attractive girl, can be said in at least three ways. I think you are an attractive girl. You are an attractive girl, I think. Or, you are, I think, an attractive girl. On certain occasions, you may need to use exclamatory sentences to express strong feelings such as anger, surprise, annoyance, etc. In these cases, plain sentences do not count. Here are some of the exclamations useful to you. Every day is the same thing. Pay up or else what a hell of a noise. What a nerve. None of your business. Shame on you. You bloody fool. Out with you, etc. Now let's talk about tax questions. Tax questions are also essential, particularly in conversation. They add charms and language skills to you when you speak English to the native speakers. Example, examples of the tech questions are these. Great day, isn't it? She is beautiful, isn't she? He isn't stupid, is he? These people are bad. Are they ironical? Or so you haven't touched a drop of alcohol for years, haven't you? Ironical. Before moving ahead, I'd like to draw your attention to the two contrastive sentences. That is, can you speak English? And do you speak English? Can you speak English? And do you speak English? Just a few years ago, I met a European on the train and I was not sure whether he could speak English or not. First, I asked him bluntly, can you speak English? Of course, he can, but he was obviously annoyed by my impertinence. He replied, no, with capital letters. So please bear in mind not to ask any Westerner, can you speak English? It is an insult to his intelligence and his knowledge of English. You better ask, do you speak English to be on the safe side? Moreover, you should decide on the use of these controversial sentences. 
A. Everyone is his own master. B. Everyone is their own master. A. It's me. B. It's I. Which one is correct? His or their? I or me? The answer is both. Both are correct. But the more conservative grammarians will use his and I in this situation. Whereas the neo grammarians may sneer at that and consider their counterpart as old fashioned. We are then left between the devil and the deep blue sea. Still deeper, you should understand the special function of an interrogative sentence. It does not always convey the meaning of a question. It can also have the meaning of a request, a command, or an invitation. The sentence, for example, Can you pass me the salt? Said in a dining hall is a request, meaning the same as Please pass me the salt. The asker does not want a reply, yes or no, from the asky, but an action that is the passing of the salt. That's all. More complicated is the fact that presupposition or implicature plays an important part in English sentences. A sentence can sometimes mean what it is and more. One sentence can presuppose another. For instance, when you ask, When did you stop beating your wife? You presuppose that the ASCII had been beating his wife and you want to know when he stopped doing that. One then should understand the intricacy and delicacy of this kind of situation when dealing verbally with people around in order not to hurt their feelings. There are some more areas you should study or you must study for your complete mastery of English, such as idioms, slang, proverbs, quotations, and foreign words in English. Now, let me conclude. As I told you, as I have already told you, that even after 20 years of continuous study of English, I still cannot write one small page without some mistakes. This is not to discourage you, but to encourage and challenge you. The fact that English is difficult makes it all the more interesting. If it is easy, it will not worth your efforts. Is that right? So, try your utmost and master English, the lingua franca of the world. The sooner, the better. Goodbye. Thank you.